What's up guys, I'm going to show you a little bit in my session and I'll just show you exactly what I do. I hope to give away all of the secrets and y'all can just kind of steal it and use it for your own music and make it better. And yeah, I know I spent, I think I went two years spending 12 hours every day studying Monday through Friday. I treated it like it was my full time job. So I'd get all of the books from the library. I bought all the books from the universities and audio engineering because that was the missing piece for me. Like I could, if I wanted to make a living doing music, I had to n not rely on somebody else to record me. I couldn't pay $500 every month to have a, um, song professionally done that was kind of not even they, like, where they didn't even take it super seriously and I had to rely on other people and it's just it was it would have made things so much harder so I decided I was going to start studying audio engineering and figuring out how to do it on my own and yeah I'm just going to show you exactly what I what I do and hopefully y'all can yeah like I said steal my tricks and skip that super long brutal learning curve because it was it was pretty psychotic so yeah, we'll start out with the vocals because I know for me that was the hardest thing to get done, like, well. And one thing I should say, too, is I'm using a whole ton of third-party plugins. I'm assuming you guys don't have these if you're first starting out. And I'd advise you, don't fall into the trap. I think when I quit my job, I spent $3,500 on a bunch of uh, Wave stuff because every time I got a new plugin, it was, I felt my mixes got better. And it was kind of an illusion because I, I just didn't know what I was doing. And I blamed my plugins and I blamed, I was always blaming my gear, but the, gear, but the problem was almost always me. So yeah, I just advise you, if invest in a few. I probably only use like $500 worth of plugins. And I also didn't wait for sales. I was pretty naive. I think I spent $180 on <laughs> H delay when I could have gotten it for like 20 if I got it in a bundle when it was on sale. And so it just wasn't, wasn't smart. So yeah, I'm just going to walk you through step by step my vocal process and then I'll show you all my instrumental stuff and all the patches that I use and all the stuff that I'm using, um, all the pianos and all the MIDI instruments and all the uh, plugins and everything and we'll just go, go about it. So yeah, let's start with vocals because that for me was the most difficult thing. I'll just solo it out. Let's go over it. <laughs> it's just a Yeah, so let's start completely dry and I'll show you step by step what I do. Um, where's my stereo bus? I'm going to turn that off. Let's go to the vocal. So I'm going to turn all the buses off and everything. We'll just go step by step. And please don't judge me for having Melodyne and Waves too. And I know I'm a bad, <laughs> I'm a horrible human. I'm insecure about my voice and with like tuning and stuff, it's like going into a Mr. Olympia competition without using steroids. Like obviously we're human. We're going to miss a few notes here and there. If I showed up, lifted weights every day, ate super healthy, try to get my body in shape and I went against a person who's using steroids in a Mr. Olympia competition, like I'd, I'd just lose. So it's just, I don't think it's i uh, I'm totally, uh, it's kind of become the norm and vocals don't totally sound right without it. So I just, I guess I'm just giving all my excuses because I'm insecure about my voice and I feel like I'm bad. So I have to use a little bit of tuning to make it better. And I'm just going to stop <laughs> with this little rant and get into it, the important stuff. So yeah, I'll use Melodyne and then I'll use, I'll automate Waves Tune on when I need it here and there. But this is the first thing. This is called F6. It's just a and here's my totally dry vocal. And F6 will just... Cut all the low frequency. I don't know where that went. Um. Basically, all the F6 was doing was taking the low frequency out. I think around like 180. Um, yeah, there we go. So let's see. 162 is just a high pass filter that gets all the low stuff out, all the weird air conditioning noises. And then right here at around 498, I'm just bringing it down. It's compressing these frequencies down. So it's kind of like a cool multi-band compressor that's easy to use because most multi-band compressors just freak me out and I have no idea what to do. But we're just kind of compressing the low frequencies so it just doesn't feel like something's missing. It kind of keeps that more consistent. 
this channel EQ, I have no idea what it's doing. I think it automates a few of the low frequencies down in like one section of the song, but I'm just going to ignore it because it's really not doing anything. And then we go into our compression. Compression makes volume even. If you don't know it, we'll turn it down when it's too high. And I don't want to get into the inner details of it because it's really confusing. But basically, I use five compressors, our Vox and our compressor, and it just most of them are doing pretty much nothing here and there yeah so this is the main one and it's only going down two to three db tops the rest of these are just like one decibel and this just keeps things nice and even if you have yeah it's just kind of weird when i my voice is so loud i remember i used to record places and they're like you're literally doing like your dynamics are about 20 decibels louder than places and other places so this keeps it from getting too crazy and over the top. But yeah, I, I like using five, com four or five compressors and just keeping everything really simple, like one to two decibels tops. And it, in total, it brings things down like 10 dB. But it's so much more subtle than if you had one compressor doing like 10 decibels of um, of compression. It just, it just works well. Here's my main vocal plugin that I use every time because I'm a bad mixer. I literally just use the uh, JJP vocals. You can get this for like 30 bucks on Waves when it's on sale and it's been phenomenal. I usually use it on literally every mix that I've done in the past like year and it just, it's just a lie. Are we all the same? Looking for love. Looking for so it just adds a little bit of compression, a little bit of uh, EQ, a little bit of DSing, and I think it sounds great. I don't entirely know what it does, but I feel like it makes me sound so much better. And there's still some reverb coming from somewhere. I'm just not going to worry about it because I don't really know where, and I'm going to waste like 20 minutes trying to find it. Yeah, so we got tune, we got e like subtractive EQ, we got compression. I use five compressors doing one to two. I'll have like one that'll do three decibels of reduction, and then I go into this JJ, uh, JJP plug-in i have no idea what it does but it makes it sound better so i stick with it and then here's my deesser and that's pretty much just my vocal chain it's not so it's too just crazy and that's just to keep s's from being too over the top so what it'll take all of the high end out when it's like a multi-band compressor it'll take the high frequency out when you're hitting an s and it keeps you from sounding like there's way too much syllabance like this phrase right here i've just used 15 s's i probably sound crazy but that's okay. This is bus one. Ice is a doubler. And this just makes things a little bit quick, like, thicker. You want to hear isolated? So where are my settings? Let me find it. Basically, all I did was I changed the detune to six, this one to negative six, this one to negative three, and this one to th positive three. If you watch Warren Hewitt's vocal thickening trick, I literally just stole that from him and I use it on every single mix because it works so well. I'll add two doublers, both going through a bus. This one is set to nine, negative nine, negative 12, and then positive 12 instead. And it just, yeah, it just adds a whole dimension of, makes it much thicker and it's very subtle. Where's the other one? Double A2. And yeah, it just makes things work. Yeah. It's just a lie. So this is Max Bass. This is just basically a plugging. I always use the Pensado vocal preset because, again, I don't know what I'm doing, and Dave Pensado is so much infinitely times better than me. And then usually it's set to audio. I always switch it to max bass, and basically what it does, it just adds like a low frequency. That's pretty nice. It's really hard to hear if you go. And yeah, it just adds a subtle low end. Um, I'm always, I don't know what's going on over here. Some dude's screaming. Yeah, it's a nice little low frequency because I take it all out earlier and, I don't know, makes things sound a little bit thicker, which I like. So where's the bus? There we go, right there. And then number five, this is my favorite trick of all. I stole this from, his name's Desmond on YouTube. I remember coming across this vocal and it tr totally like rocked my world. It's just all high end. You can hear it a little bit. 
I'm going to boost the gain up here, so. Yeah, so let's just go. Hopefully, I put those settings back to normal. If not, I'm sorry. <laughs> but let's solo this out. It's just a lie. Where is it? Are we all the same? Looking for love. And you can just hear how much brighter it makes things sound, and it's so beautiful. It's basically just an F6. FF6. I'll take everything underneath 10k out. Or I guess it's 9k, and then I'll just boost this up a little bit. Just to get some extra high frequency. I'll compress the heck out of it. It's just a make it as quick as possible. DSR. Just to compress a little bit more. And I guess there's a delay. I don't really know what that's doing. I guess it's only like 9. Maybe to add some space. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, it just adds this beautiful, beautiful high frequency that it makes me sound like I'm singing into a super expensive mic because I usually do an SM7B, which is amazing, but it's uh, it's not the brightest, prettiest microphone. It's more mid-range heavy, so. Yeah, this is a guitar amp. This is just distortion. I, can sh I don't think it comes until the end, and it just adds a little bit of aggression in my voice. Yeah, so I basically just used a preset. Uh, 1993 hot solo rig and I think it just is super cool I was really excited about this trick and then I threw it into a delay which is a 164th just like a slap basically ping pong just makes it wider and feel a little bit bigger that's where that reverb was coming from okay I see I guess at the end of my vocal chain I added a little bit more reduction on 514 so that was the bus coming out because I bust everything together which I'll show you in a few seconds yeah, but I think my final vocal bus was the, yeah, it's just a little bit more distortion. So that one was the Native Instruments. This is Guitar Rig. I got the complete 11 bundle. It was like $600, and it comes came with a whole ton of VSTs, and it's not the best sounds in the whole world, but it really works well. I guess I'm always trying to blame my VSTs when the problem is always me, so I'm just going to stop complaining and be thankful. Yeah, I think they sound... They stay work really well. I have one more vocal bus. I just use new metal distortion. It's a preset, again, because I don't really know what I'm doing. And I threw an echo on there, and it sounds like this. And yeah, it just makes the vocal a little bit thicker, again. It makes it more aggressive and adds a little bit of cool stuff. So yeah, let's solo that vocal all together without the with the buses. And then I'll show you the reverbs and the time bass effects that I threw on there. So. And you can hear there's a lot of high frequency and some people may think there should be more DSing, but I don't know. I think it I think it sounds pretty cool. I think it's pretty dope. So yeah, as far as delays and reverbs go, I'm obsessed. I love orchestral sounding music, if you haven't noticed, and I've always been, I've just always been a fan of just ginormous way over the top, and that's always been what I wanted to create, and I feel like this is the first song where I truly captured just like a crazy, ginormous cinematic feel. So yeah, the first thing I added was Bright Hall. It's a, if Valhall is Shimmer, I guess I just put it on the vocal bus itself, so it affected all of this stuff, but... It sounds like it fits a little bit better. It makes things a little bit um, just bigger, I guess, and makes it feel a little bit further back. So it feels more a part of the mix. And I'm sure I automated it up and down. So let's see. Fahala wet drive. Yeah, you can see there's automation there. So it'll get, yeah, there's certain parts where it's really low, almost off. And then by the end, I just finally um kind of peaked it out Valhalla Shimmer is like my favorite plugin it was only 50 bucks and it's just so cinematic and so huge and so beautiful here's number 19 here's another Valhalla let's hear what it's doing nothing happened <laughs> it's weird oh I guess I gotta turn it on if I want it to work right <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, so it's just this ginormous, beautiful, I used concert hall at the preset. Obviously, it's a bus, so I made it all the way wet. And then I threw on a ping pong delay, I believe. Yeah, just basic preset. I linked the BPM to the BPM of the song. And I uh, cut a bunch of the low high frequency out and a bunch of the low frequency out so it doesn't get... I guess I used analog one. I usually turn analog off because it can create a buzz. I enabled the lo-fi setting and H delay. H delay, I love... It's usually my go-to um, echo plugin, so it just adds a little bit more dimension. There's a Manny American reverb. I guess that's muted, so... It's probably ended up not using it. A little bit more delay. Kind of slap. And a bunch of things, the guitar amp and everything is going through that slap delay. And it just, it just makes things a little bit bigger again. So let's listen all together, just the vocal with all the effects and... Then my stereo bus, I have everything going through a reverb, which sounds super crazy and probably is super crazy, but I thought it sounded cool, so I stuck with it. And yeah, if you look at all of these effects, you'll see that there's a ton of automation. Like we go through here, if we just pull up the automation, we'll see everything. Nothing really stays the same. And to do that, I usually just go to touch. Here, I switch read to touch and I'll just move these up and down. And like, I'll show you, we'll go crazy with the reverb. That way you can do all this and just make it kind of a feel thing versus trying to automate a bunch of crazy lines by hand. You'll just go crazy. I'd go crazy. It's not, it takes so much time. So yeah, and I have that with most of my, I don't know if I have the, any of, yeah, I have the guitar amp BC. It's probably off for the majority of the time until the end where that most aggressive part, and it just adds a little bit of passion, a little bit of emotion. Um, yeah, other than that, I don't think there's really a whole lot of, I inserted the auto tune when I was good, and then as the song went along, I guess I got worse and <laughs> needed a little bit more help. And I always feel uncomfortable talking about auto tune, so I'm just gonna stop. <laughs> Here we go. These are a bunch of weird effects I added to make the voice a little bit bigger. They're like harmony harmonies I artificially created using Melodyne. I just changed the pitch, and we can hear what they sound like. They're just weird voices, and I added ultra pitch to make it bigger. So you can see it's just octave. I uh, sent a few octave down and I kept a few unison. And you can hear I cut out a bunch of the S's because if you have too many S's going on at the same time, it just sounds a little bit, uh, a little bit crazy. And also when you change the pitch of the S's, it sounds, it just doesn't sound, um, it, it's kind of clashing. So yeah, you can see all these stuff I just kind of cut out. And that way there's no weird doubling up with the S's because it, it just doesn't really work. Oh, I, Maladine is always doing that and my software just crashed. There we go, it's working now. And as far as the buses go, I sent it through a doubler like I showed before, the max bass, the high end trick, and then the another doubler. Yeah, so this one's probably doing a similar sort of thing. It's just on a different... But this one's going through the guitar amp. And it's an octave down. Instead of an octave up.
Yeah, so those just, I don't know. I thought they were really cool. I was real excited about them. They are pretty crazy. And yeah, that's just the vocals. Yeah, so that's exactly what I do. There's another thing. So I bust everything together. If you look at my main um, thing, you see everything's going out through a bus. If that makes sense. So like this is the output and the eventual output that everybody ends up going to is stereo output. But I kind of route them together if that makes sense um right here so that way if i want all of the music i can just solo right here and all the music's bust the same place and then i send the music to bus 15 which is the instrumental and then i'll bust all of the drums together and then send the drums through the instrumental instead of the uh, music out and that way it's, yeah. I love these so much. They still get me excited. And that way there's just so much more control over everything. It's a lot easier. So yeah, you see, I bust them all together. And eventually the instrumental goes to the stereo output. And I do that just so I can process things individually. And you'll see there's like, uh, I love to use the F6 when the vocal comes in. A lot of this plugin helps me to kind of create room in the mix for vocals. So you'll see the lead vocal goes out through bus number 16, and I link this to bus 16, and then when the vocal's in, it'll just create... It, it kind of sidechains frequencies in and out. You'll see. That way, just every time the vocal comes in, it kind of comes a little bit more up front, but it's not taking the whole mix down. It's just the certain parts where the vocal is most prevalent. And it's an easy way to kind of make things flow together a bit better, if that makes sense. See, so yeah, as far as vocal goes, I think that's about it. I send all of my stereo out through a... Uh, I kind of process these effects. I f the better I get, the more I do kind of in buses versus you'll see like there's really no processing going on in any of these tricks. When I first started... I used to process every single track and EQ every single check and track and everything I always ended up sounding so bright and so like almost painful. So yeah, as I've gotten better at mixing, I've kind of done less to individual tr tracks and I processed more of the, uh, the buses where things kind of come together. But yeah, you can see my stereo bus track is, I have the Valhalla and that just makes things more epic. Here's Greg Wells mix centric plug and I barely do anything it's just literally 7.6 up and that just makes things brighter i honestly don't usually like it but i worked for this mix because it made it feel i don't know more hi-fi high frequency this is my ssl it's just compressing two to three db on the mastering preset again i don't know what i'm doing so <laughs> presets are usually the best way to go about it but you'll see it's That just brings the whole mix forward and kind of glues it all together if that makes sense it makes it feel kind of like it's yeah like it's all working together I'll, i uh, use this on every mix i use the ssl on every mix and I use this on every mix this is just tape it makes things sound a little bit worse if that makes sense i always go to clean and open but it adds kind of like a cool distortion feel it's like a 
I don't know how to explain it. I guess I'll just play it and y'all can hear for yourselves, but it just kind of makes it feel a little more real. So it kind of adds a little bit of distortion to like the high frequency and it, I really like it. The preset comes with noise, you don't want that because it will just hiss. So I definitely turned that off. Um, but yeah, let's go into the instrumental a bit. I'll show you what I do. I've always been obsessed with like movie soundtracks and like epic orchestral stuff. So I guess I'll just go track by track. Unfortunately, not all of my, I lost a few of my tracks. Like I don't think any of the guitars are here anymore, which is super, super sad, but oh well, I can show you what I got. So basically, like, I'll just start with this end part. There's the double bass. This is a Native Instruments just stock double bass ensemble patch on sustain. I didn't do anything crazy. And these are all, this is all MIDI, so it, I typed it up on the piano roll and just made it all work. This is the stock gospel ensemble from that Logic comes with, but I added this true verb and I did a millennium verb preset, which sounds freaking beautiful. I'll show you with and without. Normal, it sounds a little fake, cheesy. But this just adds a whole bunch of space, and obviously I turned it down because it can be a little too much, but it just adds a beautiful, eerie feeling, a huge feeling. So I added another gospel ensemble. There's more of a punchy cello. This is just cello ensemble from Native Instruments. You can see it kind of builds as we go. Here's Frazando, I don't know how to say it. So I took the same setting, but I switched this from sustain to Frazando, Forzando, please don't hate me. Viola, same series. On Forzando again. It's a legato. This is another violin in some of it on sustain. This is my favorite part. It's Frisando again. This one's panning from left to right with Mondo Mod. This is uh, another. So I believe these are just octaves. Yeah, so this is the low one. Oh, that's even a different melody than this one. And I do believe they oftentimes tend to get off tempo when they're that punchy because the attack isn't totally on. So I do have to kind of length them back a little bit and pull them back a bit so that they stay on grid with the click and everything else. And then from there, I added the French horns that come with uh, Logic. I don't know why that EQ's there, but you can see there's Space Designer, just simple stock Logic plugins. That's a preset. Fine Hall, if you go to Large Spaces, Halls, and then Fine Hall. Yeah, and switch anything up other than that. And then you can see with the brass, I like to add a little bit of distortion. This is Sheps 73. And I literally just turned the drive setting on. I think it comes like that, normal. And I always boost it up a bit, and I boosted a bit of the... Uh, I believe low, or no, I boosted a little bit of the highs and it just kind of adds more of an epic movie feel. And that's the stock trombone that comes with native instruments. Yeah, it just makes it feel a little bit more epic. It pulls the low frequency because it tends to get a little muddy. And I know people say you should always bust through the, uh, or you should always add the reverb and stuff through the bus, and you probably should, but whatever. <laughs> I was lazy. So yeah, there's my orchestra. I'm obsessed with this sort of thing, and I'm so proud of the orchestra work that's on uh, this song. 
There's the chorus. Same. So let's take a look at a few of the uh, drum parts. This is kind of the loop that comes in the second verse. We look back here. So it's literally just a clock. I got this, I think it's a sample that I got in Splice. And here's another one a little quicker. And then that's a um set that comes with oh shoot we're gonna crash again oh never mind yeah this is a set that comes with uh native instruments complete 11 it's called berlin headquarters and i just kind of let the groove go a little bit here's another one of those i believe i may have muted this yeah that's real subtle And then we got the kick. It's just a splice effect. Then there's the, I know we lost one of the snares, so we can just play this. Yeah, so I think I reversed something here. Yeah, we lost the snare. This is a reverse of the snare that we had. I bounced it and then I um, reversed it. Yeah, but that said, that was one of my favorite effects that I came up with. Then we, I reversed a kick drum to kind of make it transition into the next. It's just super simple. Then I added some, so that's just basically the makeup of the drum loop. There's my dog wanting to go inside. <laughs> I didn't show you the bongos. This is another another loop that I got on Splice. Yeah, those bongos. And it's pretty much that, the piano, which is the giant from Native Instruments. So I have one that's literally doing the same note the whole entire time. And it just adds kind of like an ambience, almost like a pad. It's kind of eerie sounding. Then this is the normal. And I think all I did, it's the stock sound, it took the tone down a little bit. So if it's too hard, it sounds just a lot of high end. And then I think I switched up the reverb and it's really NF sounding, I love it. And here's, I reversed uh, E flat, I believe. Oh, there's the C sharp, this one. Never mind, that's another C sharp. Oh, well, it's a bunch of different <laughs> weird notes. There's the E flat. So I literally just took the piano, I made a track. I uh, created A note. Turn the velocity up. I bounced it, file, bounce, region in place. Then I double clicked the region that I created. Oh, I don't know what's going on right now. I went to file, I went to functions, I did reverse. It's being all weird. I don't know what's going on. Oh, well, that's how to make it work. <laughs> My laptop's being weird. Oh, there we go. And 
that's basically it. And then I added a, I went T and then fade tool. And I just went all the way and it made it have more of a kind of peak. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of transitions, which I basically did the same kind of thing. I took a bunch of patches and a bunch of uh, sounds and I just bounced them and then I reversed them like I just showed you. And that's how I transitioned from place to place. Like this one, I believe I took a kick drum for here and then I added a super long reverb. So let's just do that. So I got a kick. It's nice and simple. Just make sure that, yeah, that's not being used. I added a reverb. And then I bounced it in place. And then I reversed it. And let's see what it sounds like. So I took all the <laughs> high frequency out in that bus. But if I do it for real, you'll hear a lot more. Yeah, it's just a cool effect. And then you always have to kind of add, always highlight it. I go to region, fade in, fade out, and it keeps you from having weird clicks. And it'll probably still have it because of the initial part of the kick drum, but. Yeah, so let's just delete that. And we'll keep moving. Yeah, we'll do the drums at the end because they're pretty awesome. It's like my favorite part. I took a bunch of like splice samples and I kind of put them together. Like here's Epic Toms. This is from Native Instruments, which is called Epic Soundtrack. It comes, the preset, there's lots of this effect balance, which kind of sounds weird. So I just take it out, but other than that, it's just normal. And it's just a huge tom here. This is another sample from Splice. And I added a half echo. And this is just a huge snare from Splice. I think I reversed that snare. I bounced it and then I reversed it like I showed you. And it kind of comes in for the next one. It just makes it feel huge. I'm not sure what this is. Oh, I gotta turn this back on. Yeah, let's solo that out because I'm not totally sure what's going on. Yeah, so this is just another sample from Spice, Spice, I believe, and I kind of pitched it down. It's a cymbal. And then I had it go from side to side. So it's kind of cool. And this is an even bigger sample that just is ginormous and makes it feel like a full orchestra. This is a tom loop that I got from Splice and I chopped up to make it fit the rhythm that I wanted. There's the kick drum. Crash symbol. Then another loop from Splice. Actually, no, I bounced this and then I put it down here and I don't know what it did to it. I'm surprised there's not phase issues because I think it's literally the same thing from right here. Here's a sub. Yeah, I just love that so much. just muted everything and yeah there were our guitars in there i lost the audio file unfortunately but it literally it was just chords and then it was kind of um 
and me making ambient noises i threw the valhalla on there there's a whole bunch of that so it just adds to the ginormous sound i added a little bit of compression for side chaining i don't know why what i was side chaining to but and then took the low frequency up because when you have a lot of tracks uh the low frequency kind of builds up and so things start to sound muddy so i think it's real important especially when you're doing huge stuff like this to just kind of be wary of your usage of high frequency this is a kit from native instruments called arena kit it's kind of the stock i added a guitar stump overdrive reverb i uh, one eighth dotted and then threw it into a panner this just goes right to left and this is a high pass filter so i'll you can see it's moving i automated the to come up and down and to do that again you just go from read to touch and you can just move it as much as you want and it'll stay and it'll just mimic it because it it's the way the software works so that was one of the biggest things that i learned it's been super helpful Yeah, I think we pretty much covered everything. Um, yeah, here's a bunch of piano notes that I reversed and just added to the sound. This is a little noise I created. I took a gospel ensemble and I added a bunch of reverb effects. And then I bounced it and I added a, another more... Like you can see without it. Delay. Make it a little bit crazier. Reverb, it kind of pushes it back a whole bunch. Then I added this, and it's, again, a high-pass filter going up and down. And it's just kind of adding tension and a lot of eeriness. This pans it to weird places. And then I think that's the first chorus, where I throw the cello in. Oh no, it's the first single part of the verse. Just the noise that are reversed as a kind of transition. Oh, this is a throw delay. So I bounced the... I bounced the uh, vocal in place and then I just kind of cut and pasted and that way it's just not echoing everything. It's just certain parts and I can turn it up and you can hear a bit of a trail. Just adds a cool effect and makes it, yeah, makes it feel a bit bigger. And yeah, here's a crackle effect that I kind of threw, put throughout. And it just kind of adds a bit of ambience. I don't think I showed you the master, this final plugin too. I just did on the stereo bus, I did an Aptive. It's just a preset that I know Greg Wells uses a lot. So I just did that and I adjusted the threshold so that I was only getting a little bit. It was just touching it. So you see it's not doing too much. But yeah, I think I pretty much covered everything. I don't know. <laughs> I hope this is super helpful and y'all can skip all the tireless hours of just crazy headaches that I spent trying to learn how to do this stuff because it's, yeah, it just took me forever and I don't think anybody should. So it'd be better just to skip that curve and just get straight to making music because this is the logical side and I was always gifted musically when it comes to instruments and writing and stuff but this was a whole nother area that you, you can't really yeah you can't I don't it's some people are born more keen to this I'm not I'm very scatterbrained and this is more like a logical 
structured sort of thinking and I'm total scatterbrained all over the place. And so it just, it took me, I, it didn't come naturally to me at all, but yeah, it's, I, I don't know. Anybody can do anything. You just gotta, you just gotta push a bit. So thank you so much for listening. I love you guys so much. This song is so special to me and I just, I'm just blown away as always. And I'm probably going to do more of these, but yeah, beautiful. Thank you.